Hello, I am David W. Parker. This is Programming Today I Learned, WebGL series, episode 85. Today we're going to be looking at how to have each object with its own WebGL program. And what that's going to enable us to do is to do certain things like uh, having blending and different things because uh, they each have their own program. Um, so let's just jump in real quick. So we have a few new um, utility functions here. Basically, we just moved the UUID out to uh, SA Knife, Swiss Army Knife. Um, we're just going to have generic things there, just to kind of clear up the index a little bit. Uh, additionally, within glutils, we've cleaned up a few things. We're now just going to use this.gl, and rather than passing it in for uh, create program, as well as get shader, and then we've moved the texture initialization in here as well. Uh, we'll be receiving an array of images, textures where it's going to be stored, and any callbacks that may need to happen after a promise. Um, so we still have everything being the same other than just cleaning that up. And I'll show you what that looks like in the application. It's pretty simple. So, and then uh, we can go ahead and take a look. So we have a couple of names and sources for images here. Um, that's slightly different than how it was before. Um, we're going to go ahead and we still storing the textures in the state app um, array. And then finally here, so you can see glutils is going to initialize textures with all those images and then store them in the state app textures and then afterward it's going to go ahead and initiate the drawing. So it's the same as before except for the fact that we've moved it into glutils. Uh, basically that makes it for convenience and nice. Here's the usage of SA knife. Again, just calling it um, as we would before. Gone ahead and set a few other things on the cube. Now we're going to set gl based off we're going to get the uh, ops.gl, so we're going to get that passed into it. And that provides us, rather than just using it on state, is we're going to basically be able to pull cube out eventually into its own thing and still access the same uh, WebGL instance. Uh, it now has uh, a number of programs passed into it. Uh, we're going to go ahead and set this uh, has texture on ops based off if there's a texture provided. And um, so those are all new, as well as the render mode uh, for the, each object. Uh, scrolling down, you can see we removed our alphas here, so we're not doing any blending right now. Uh, decrease the size appropriately. We've moved the selection color up here, and we're still going to set the buffer data and the initialization, uh, but just defining it up here um, beforehand. Now here's the biggest change probably is we're going to have under draw, we're going to have this.gl use program, and it's going to get the programs that belong to the cube as well as the render mode for the cube. And then we're also going to have all of the uniforms for said program um, basically referenced here as well. And we could probably move these to initialization and have each of the programs that belong to the cube have their own uh, matrices, uh, and we may do that eventually in a later episode. And then the rest of the draw is basically the same because we have all of the data available to us um, as we would before. Uh, the main difference, of course, being that it is applied uh, to this actual cube. Uh, additionally, the uh, texture, we're using the has texture check to see if we're going to have one, and it's going to be applied with the textures that belong all in the application, but we can probably pull those into the cube as well if we wanted to. And um, so that makes things a little bit cleaner. Uh, this is still not as ugly or as pretty as I'd like. Probably could use a nice uh, functional program to do that, but it still works. And we're just setting the buffer data now as opposed to the entire A cell color object. Scrolling down, you can see we're still setting the state program. So we have a read program, we have a render program, and we have a texture program. And those are uh, all shaders that you've seen before, but you can go ahead and look at them when you want to look in the source. Um, doing different things like blending was still on here, but we're not using them. So now, uh, under initializing the state, we're going to have these objects. Uh, pushed onto this, or creating a new array technically, but pushed onto the objects array. And they're going to have the GL, and then they're going to have programs. So we're going to have a render mode and read mode for every single cube. And some of them may have a regular just plain render, and some may have a texture provided with them. They're each going to have their own unique selection color and any kind of transformations. Additionally, ones with texture are going to have a texture key with the name of the key that is being used. This is the same one that belongs all the way up here. So you'll see there's two different named images here. 
and that affords us the ability to do um, this line right here where we're going to be saying what the name is and uh, grabbing the right texture. Um, scrolling back down to the initialization of the cubes, you can see we have several with crate and texture and several with read, render, and then one with the stained glass here. And scrolling down, you can see the drawing is very, very, very simplified, um, as well as uh, the fact that we've removed all of the uh, code on the textures, like I said, that's been moved. Mouse down is a little bit different as well. Um, we're basically still going to have the blend on, um, and eventually we may end up moving that into the programmed object as well. So um, let's go ahead and take a look at the application here. You can see we have these different cubes. The lighting is still good and works the way it should. Um, and you can re rotate around and see the different uh, where the light is and everything. So um, anyway, that's it for this episode. Uh, if you uh, liked what you saw, go ahead and give me a like. Uh, share on social media, if you will. Um, subscribe on YouTube. That'll help me a lot. Um, as well as uh, follow me on Twitter and uh, go to ProBNTIL.com and sign up for my newsletter. Have a great one. Thank you. Bye.